in this video it gives some tips for bio or life sciences essays um, and for writing paper two. So I'm mostly talking about IEB essays as that's what I have experience with. I'm not sure how the CAP syllabus differs from this. I'm sure a lot of these tips will be really helpful for people doing bio for the CAP syllabus, but uh, I'm not sure exactly how the essays work or how paper two for biology works. So this is probably more useful for those doing IEB. So just firstly, I'm gonna start with some general tips. Find out your paper two topic. I think this 2020 year is a uh, reproduction, um, as was evolution when we did it. And um, obviously that's what your essay is gonna to relate to. Your essay is gonna have some link to the topic that's covered in your paper two. Um, and then do some research on something. So for you guys, for if I'm right about reproduction, do some research on some topics relating to reproduction that could be possible essay topics. Obviously, you're never going to be able to predict it perfectly. But if you can go in having an idea of, okay, maybe th two or three um, controversial issues that relate to bio and relate to reproduction, then you might just get lucky and get something relating to your topics. And then at least you know you have some own knowledge. So what I did for evolution, I think I had, there was about three or four um, possible essay topics that I'd thought about and done some research on. I chatted to my bio teacher. I chatted to friends from other schools and saw what their teachers um, thought. Obviously, none of your teachers, unless they're the examiner, are going to actually know what the topic is, but they can all have their ideas and suspicions. So it's a great idea to chat to them um, and then do some research on those specific topics because at least you're going to go in with some own knowledge. That can be really, really helpful in writing your essays. Um, in terms of the structure of paper two, paper two is two hours long. Um, it's 100 marks in total with 60 marks for case study questions. So it's usually two um, 30 mark case studies and then 40 marks for your essay. Uh, my advice would be to take an hour to do the case study questions and an hour in total for your essay. That doesn't mean an hour of essay writing. That means an hour of um, focusing on your essay. So that would be planning your essay, reading all your sources, um, and obviously doing the writing. Usually it would be about half an hour, 35 minutes of actually writing your essay. Um, our teachers always used to say 10 to 15 minutes planning your essay. I always took a little bit longer and I tried to do a more thorough plan. So if you have time for that, try and get your plan to quite a decent plan. Spend like maximum 20 minutes though on it. Don't spend any longer than that on planning your essay. It's only six marks. You can get maximum six marks. So don't spend half an hour on it because that's not worth using your time for that. Um, in terms of reading, obviously, Everybody differs in reading speed, but it usually takes a while to get through all your sources. There's usually, it goes up to around about source, it can range, but source H to M, which is like uh, eight to 13-ish um, sources, which is quite a lot of sources. So try and get as much as you can done during the reading time. And then of course, in your case studies, there's often a lot of reading in your case studies as well. So paper two is very reading intensive. Um, so try and um, make sure that you can read at least at a decent speed without missing um, important information and don't let it take too long when you're reading your sources. Um, obviously the part that's going to get you the most marks excluding the case studies is writing your essay so you've got to spend the most time on that. If we then look at the essay itself it's structured obviously you have a plan and then you're going to write your essay usually the actual essay itself can range in length they don't specify a length but it tends to be around two pages i often went to three three and a half pages if you have time obviously make sure you have time one thing to note in terms of timing is if you finding that you're running out if you see you've got like seven minutes left and you not finished your essay stop where you are and write your conclusion because you get marks for a conclusion. Make sure that you've got a proper conclusion. Don't bullet points it either. Um, they don't like bullet points, they really don't. So 
just stop your paragraph where you are, maybe skip two or three lines, write your conclusion. If you come back and you still have two minutes, finish your paragraph. But it's more important to finish your conclusion than to finish your other paragraphs. And if you like me, I used to leave my counter arguments. So I'd write my essay, write all my arguments, write my counter arguments, and then conclude. So the last two things I'd be doing would be counter arguments and conclusion. Both of those are quite heavy in marks. So make sure if you are running out of time, make sure you've mentioned one or two counter arguments somewhere in there, put your conclusion in, and then you can go back to trying to fit in the rest of your essay. So paper two is very time intensive you are going to rush um if you finish obviously you should finish but a lot of people don't so if you don't finish don't stress about it but obviously try your best to finish so in terms of the structure of the essay there's the plan as i said which should take you 10 to 15 minutes max 20 minutes um sometimes i know people used to read the sources write the essay and once they finished the essay they used to make their plan because they always said, oh, it's only six marks, I'd rather focus on my essay and then come back to my plan. And at least then I know that my plan matches my essay. But I always, obviously, I used to write my plan first. Um, for me, it really, really helped having a plan so that you know what you're writing in your essay. You're not just writing your essay off the top of your head. And you can get these six marks really easily if you write a solid plan that works. Um, what I used to do, and obviously this doesn't work for everyone, but if you're finding that you're never finishing by paper two, that you're always struggling with timing or you're not getting the marks you want, you can maybe try something like this. Is What I used to do is in my reading time, I'd read my essay sources. As soon as time started, I'd write my plan. I'd plan my essay. I'd spend like 15 minutes on it, max 20 minutes. Then I'd do my case studies. I'd finish my case studies, try and get them done in an hour, like really try, like scribble try and get them done in an hour and then you have 40 minutes left to write your essay. Uh, that's how I did it and I've never not finished a bio paper so it always worked for me um, but obviously this isn't going to work for everyone. In terms of your plan there's six marks for the plan as I said and there are six specific things they're looking for. The first is that you've got key points present so do you have uh, these are basically kind of like your topic sentences per paragraph. So um, these would be what you're basing your argument on if your, let's say the argument is, um, should humans be vegetarian? And you ask, you arguing, yes, we should stop eating meat, we should become vegetarian. Your points could be um, health, uh, saving the environment. Um, ugh, I don't know what else, um, saving the animals or something those could be your three key points that are present and then obviously within each paragraph you'd have four five points um three four five points um elaborating on each key point so that leads me to the second mark that's your key points developed i'm going to show you a plan of how i used to plan um obviously you don't have to do it like that but i, I got six marks for that plan and so what i would do is i'd get my key points and then you develop them. So you talk about, um, you'd have a, a little arrow for each key point and then you develop them. So you delve further into them, you elaborate on your points. Why is vegetarianism saving the environment? Well, ugh, I don't know. Um, there's less, less methane released from cows. Um, it's better for the land. It um, helps the ozone layer. Ugh, I don't know, but you know what I'm, those are the, um, developing points that come from your key points. Another mark comes to your de decision, clearly identifies. Make sure that you do have your decision. Don't change decision halfway through. It's really, really important that you pick your decision, you identify it and you stick to it. Um, the best way to do that would just be to say agree or disagree and then what you're agreeing or disagreeing with. So agree that the legal drinking age should be raised to 21, disagree, um, that humans should be vegetarian, um, something like that. Um, identify your sources, so make sure you know that your marker knows where you're getting your information from for your key points and the development of your points. Um, I used to just put in brackets like A, B, C or whatever my sources were. Um, make sure your other information is identified, so that's your own knowledge. 
um, make sure they, the markers know where your um, which points are from your own knowledge because obviously, otherwise they don't know. Um, they're not going to go back and take the time to read all your sources. So they don't know if you've got this knowledge from your source or from yourself. And, but don't lie. Don't say that you got it for yourself when it's from your source because they're going to be able to see that 12 different people before you have used that knowledge. Um, what are the chances that all of you have the same own knowledge? Very low. It must be from the source. So identify your own knowledge, but don't lie and say that it's your own knowledge when it's from the source. And then the last point is for having counter arguments. So identify where your counter arguments are and try if you can in your plan to refute your counter arguments or just give a little sentence or two about what you're gonna to use to refute your counter arguments. For your, your plan, it can be in mind map format, it can be linear, every plan differs, it's whatever works for you. I'll show you what I used to do and what works for me, but they're, they're not strict about the structure at all as long as you've got these six uh, key information things, you're gonna get the marks. Um, try to include a key in your source. I mean, in your plan, you'll see here that I put a key and I'll show you this a bit later, but um, it just helps your marker to know where your information is coming from, what uh, belongs to what, um, and it really just simplifies things for your marker. And obviously the main idea in every exam you're writing is to keep your marker happy because they're the ones giving you the marks. Um, it's fine if your plan doesn't match your essay completely. It's fine if you write your plan and then in your essay you say, oh, actually, I don't think I want to talk about this point. I'd rather talk about this. But don't change like an entire key point. Maybe just change one of the developing points or um, you can add in and maybe if you don't have time to put in your essay, that's okay. But don't suddenly change your whole argument, change your stance or um, just leave out a key point or something that will cost you marks but if they don't reflect each other completely if you change the order or something like that it's not going to uh, bother your marker it won't matter and then in terms of the essay itself so starting with the introduction try to start with something a little bit inter interesting um, it's not creative writing don't go off on this metaphor or or start off with this huge bang but don't just start off with the legal drinking age should be raised to 21. That's a little bit like boring. Your, your marker is gonna have read the sentence 12,000 times before in marking all the other essays. They don't want to read another essay starting with the exact same sentence. So try and start with something a little bit different. Something like um, if your source has told you, if you're talking about the legal drinking age, your source has told you that 5% um, of South Africa's population has died in 2018 from, um, from drinking related drunk driving accidents. Then start with something like that. Start with um, a, a portion or a significant portion of South Africa's population has been affected by drunk drivers on the road. Um, and then say, um, this is what drunk driving is, do all your definitions and then say, therefore, uh, we should raise, or South Africa should raise the legal drinking age to 21. So just try and capture their attention a little bit. Um, it will help your mark every now and then um, with, to, to show that your introduction not only makes sense, but also kind of captivates the reader. Um, in your introduction, you need to have all your definitions. This is where you define everything. But as I'm going to say a little bit later, definitions don't count as facts. They don't count as the knowledge that's giving you the marks. So don't spend 20 minutes on your introduction giving all your definitions because you're not actually getting very many marks from that. And obviously in, in your introduction, you need to have a sentence on your stance. You need to have a solid sentence telling your marker, this is what I'm arguing for. This is what I'm arguing against um, to make sure they know where you are, what your point of view is. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy, it just has to say the legal drinking age should be raised to 21, or vaccinations should be compulsory, or we should not become vegetarian. Just make sure you've got your stance in there. Then for your body, obviously this is where you're gonna get most of the marks. In terms of marks for um, content and for facts, you need 
nine plus facts. I said 10 to 12 here because that's keeping it safe. 10 to 12 facts from your sources. As I said, definitions don't count as facts. Facts need to be something that's backing up your argument. Um, and they need to be from your sources. So that's not including your own knowledge facts. Um, that's this uh, having facts gives you eight marks of the 40 marks. So it's, it's quite important. Um, if you can try and get as many as possible. Um, then for own knowledge, you need two to three own knowledge points, four, five, honestly, as many as you can, but like minimum two um, of your own knowledge. And that's obviously related to up here, why I said do some research, see if you can get some possible topics, study your uh, material, because it's obviously going to relate to your material, because that's where you're going to get your own knowledge from. And then obviously relate your own knowledge to the sources. So if a source talks about a topic that you know a bit of own knowledge about, that's where you can use your own knowledge from. Use the sources to give you ideas of what your own knowledge should be about. Um, as I said, a definition, just as it is in the fact, a definition also isn't own knowledge just because you can define um, vegetarian and the sources don't define it doesn't mean it's own knowledge. It has to back up your argument. Um, try not to use own knowledge as a counter argument, or in fact, just don't. Don't use your, your own knowledge as a counter argument because your marker is going to think, why are you trying to give something that we haven't even given you in the source? Something that you've thought of yourself as a counter argument, as an argument that's uh, going against your stance. It, it really um, messes with your scientific merit of your. Um, of your argument, of your essays. So don't use own knowledge as a counter argument. There will be enough counter arguments in the sources. They pretty much always give you an equal amount of sources arguing for and against the topic. So it's, they make it fair. They make it easy to argue, or well, not easy, but they make it equal to argue for or against the essay topic that they give you. So there will be enough knowledge in the sources to use as counter arguments. Um, and you only need three to four counter arguments. You need 10 to 12 facts, but only three to four counter arguments. So as I said, you will have enough. Refute every counter argument. If you tell me that um, you are arguing we should go vegetarian, then you say some people argue um, that not eating meat means that we don't have enough protein to build our muscles, for example. That's your counter argument. You then need to refute it. You need to say, but these people are wrong because we get enough protein from vegetables such as spinach, etc. Um, so you need to make sure that you've said, some people do argue against my argument. There are arguments that disagree with my stance. However, we can refute these counter arguments. We don't need to worry about these counter arguments because of this evidence. And you say evidence. If you did use a fact or your own knowledge to refute a counter argument, that's fine. You're totally allowed to do that. But remember that it doesn't count as a new fact or a new own knowledge. So it doesn't count in these 10 to 12 facts or in these uh, two to three own knowledge. So just remember that when you're trying to um, do your counter arguments, the best way to refute a counter argument would be to use unreliability to say the source is not credible. So you could say some people argue that um, we don't get enough protein if we're vegetarian. However, the source that argues this is not credible because it is an emotive blog. Um, so we do not need to worry about this. Obviously not in that language, but that would be the best way to use, um, uh, to refute because it not only gives you marks for credibility, but it doesn't take away from these 10 to 12 facts. And we, while I keep saying 10 to 12 facts, two to three on knowledge, don't obsess about this. You don't need to sit and count the number of facts you've used. That's just going to waste time. Just write your essay using as many facts as possible. Um, in terms of credibility, you need to examine at least two sources for credibility. Try to have one source that you examine as credible and one as not credible, but it's okay if you just do two credible, two not credible. Um, and obviously, if you can do more than two, that's fantastic. Looking at credibility, um, I'm just going to quickly look into this. 
when could a source be credible? Some of the things that make a source credible would be um, a journal. That's obviously the most important if taken from a scientific journal because it's peer reviewed, making it credible. If there's an expert in his or her field, so um, someone who's been studying this topic for at university or their entire life, they're quite credible. If there's scientific research and studies, not just research that Hello Magazine has done into the topic, it's got to be proper scientific research. And independent studies, so from independent researchers, um, if they're coming to the same conclusion um, and they're getting the same results, then that makes them um, more credible. And if you need to, another way to look, another um, fact you could use for credibility is if the source has a .org or .gov for a website, because usually an organizational website or a government website wouldn't use incorrect facts because they're not trying to promote a product um, and they're not trying to be biased. They usually use checked and peer reviewed facts. This is not the most um, or the best way to back up credibility, but if you don't have any of these options, you can use .org and .gov. What makes a source not credible? Um, if it's a .com, so a commercial website, a blog, a magazine, a newspaper, these usually are quite biased. They're not peer reviewed. Um, they're usually quite emotive and opinionated um, and they don't base all their contents on proper checked facts and evidence. Um, obviously in terms of magazines, there are some scientific magazines um, and these would fall into the credibility. Well, I mean, they're more credible um, sources, but like People Magazine, Get Away, that sort of thing, obviously is not credible. And if there's any sign of bias of emotive language, if there's something like a spelling mistake, that obviously doesn't lend to the credibility of the source. So you could use that as an argument for why it's not credible. And then going back to the structure of your essay, once you've done your um, introduction, you've talked about all your key points, you've done your counter arguments, or you now have to conclude. As I said, the conclusion is quite an important part of the essay. Try to make sure you've got that in. Don't add any new information in your conclusion. You should have covered everything you're talking about in your essay. In your conclusion, you're just summarizing. So summarize all your main points. Use your plan to check that, um, to check what your main points were and to try and um, get it into a quick summarized form. And in your conclusion, try and include your stance again. Um, try and end with your stance. Therefore, we should, or humans should be vegetarian. Um, one of the important things which I didn't write down here is in your essays, don't use personal language. So no I, no we, no um, we as the human population or we as South Africans, don't use that. You're writing a scientific essay, um, an argumentative essay. So keep it very third person. South Africans should or humans should. Um, in terms of the rubric, they, I'm not sure if some schools provide their students with the rubric um, so that you can see where you um, get your marks. But if I can just break it down here, it's your essays out of 40. You get six marks for planning, which I explored above. You get two marks for your decision. So making sure that you've got a clear decision that's made. You're not um, swapping halfway through your essay to a new decision. Your marker can tell straight away what your decision is and tell that you've kept to it. You get two marks for that. For knowledge from sources, you get eight marks. So this is where your 10 to 12 facts is. Um, and looking, have you used close to the full potential of the detail of the source? Um, own knowledge, this is for four marks. So have you given more facts beyond what the source has given? And do these facts back up your argument? For content re relevance and credibility, it's actually two marks that relate to um, are your other sources you're using relevant? So do, the, do these facts help your um, essay? Have you shown where the sources are credible, where they aren't? Obviously, you don't have to do this for all sources, but as I said, two or three is good. Um, so acknowledge the, cr the quality of your sources. That's credibility. Um, and are your arguments relevant? Do they actually relate to your topic? You're not just taking facts from the essay and writing them down, I mean, from the sources and writing them down without acknowledging why or why not they back up your source. 
and you're making sure you haven't repeated your facts. So don't just waffle on about the same thing for three paragraphs. You then get eight marks for your arguments and flow. So making sure that you have a clear decision and that you're strongly supporting that decision, that your reasoning is logical and succinct. Um, your flow is logical, your essay flows, it doesn't jump between facts randomly. And it's a compelling essay. So that relates to starting with a strong introduction, um, keeping your facts relevant and logical, and your arguments well integrated. Um, so this is quite hard to get all eight marks. Obviously, it's not impossible, but it's okay if you get like six or seven for this. It's, it's tough to get all eight. And then you get four marks for fairness. So fairness as in being fair to the other side of the argument. Are you acknowledging that there is another side to this? So that obviously relates to counter arguments. Um, that would be integrating, as I said, three to four, even five counter arguments into, um, into yours. And are you refuting them? Are you saying, we acknowledge that they are the other side, there is another opinion. However, my opinion is the correct one because Four marks for presentation. This is not neatness or anything. Presentation as in a correct tone. Is your tone mature? Have you used proper scientific language? Um, are your paragraphs structured correctly? Um, and does it flow correctly between the paragraphs? And this also relates to your introduction. Is it an introdu interesting introduction? Is it an interesting conclusion? Um, does your conclusion summarize all the main points? Does your introduction give the definitions that you need? That um, all goes into these four marks. And then the last two marks are for scientific merit. This is a slightly more um, opinion-based mark. So your marker decides, does this essay show scientific merit? Basically, does it show um, proper academic writing, academic reasoning, logic, um, good insight, good analysis of the sources. Um, this is where you'll get the two marks for that. So if you've written a good logical essay, it flows well, uses correct language, um, it's quite succinct, you're not waffling on, you're gonna get those two marks. And as I said, total out of 40. So if we just quickly look at a plan, this is a plan I wrote, uh, I think I did it for my grade 11 November exam. Um, but bio essays don't change from grade 10. So this is fine for grade 11. I mean, for matric. Uh, what I did is, as you see, I had a mind map. I had my stance, made it very clear. Um, we were arguing whether we or not we should make vaccinations compulsory. My stance is for making vaccinations compulsory. So I didn't say here, I agree or agree with making vaccinations compulsory, but I said for, and underlined it, wrote in capital letters. You can see very clearly what my decision is. I then went into my introduction. Um, you can see that I gave definitions. Um, I gave my stance. Um, I then went into a few different paragraphs. So vaccinations protect you from diseases. This would be a key point. And then I developed my key point. There's 14 serious diseases. Um, the effects of these diseases prevented and that can relate to fewer missed school days, missed days of work, etc. Um, you can see here that in brackets I put like A or A, B, T, H. This is where I got my information from, from source A, source B, source D, and source H. When I said OI, that's own information. And you can see on the key, I said it here, letter, so A, B, C, D, that's from the source. OI is own information. Don't just write OI or OK. Tell your marker that OI means own information. Otherwise, they're not going to know what this means. Um, I then had a second key point, which was polio. Um, then I had a third key point, which were other vaccinations. Um, and then I went into my counter arguments. Um, you can see here that I used a square uh, bullet point for counter arguments, which I then talked about in my key, so that the marker knows this is my counter argument. And a wiggly arrow for uh, refuting of counter arguments, which I also mentioned in my key. My marker knows, here's my counter argument. Here's, where I've, here's what I've um, used to refute it. And then with yellow highlighting, I talked about credibility. Um, for in terms of credibility, it's better to mention in your essay, but you can also talk about credibility in your plan. Try and talk about it in both if you have time. But if you don't have time, the most important part would be to put credibility of sources in your essay rather than in your plan.